Hello everyone! On the table are three Firelight Fire Alarm Control Panels, the 411 UDAC, the MS5012, and the MS5024. These are microprocessor based conventional Fire Alarm Control Panels with built-in communicators. These were first produced in the mid to late 1990s and were designed for smaller facilities. In many instances, especially with the 411 UDAC, these were used strictly as Fire Alarm Communicators as an addition to a larger Fire Alarm system. Regardless, these compact and cost-effective panels can be used in a variety of different ways, from a standalone fire alarm panel to a fire alarm communicator, or as a combination fire alarm panel and communicator. So let's jump right into this. All three of these panels are about the same size and function very similarly, although with some minor differences. 411 UDAC has four zones, one signal circuit, and operates on 12 volts. It does not have a keypad display and requires an external programmer to make any changes. The MS5012 has five zones, one signal circuit, and operates on 12 volts. It does have a keypad with a display and can be programmed completely from the front panel. It does not require an external programming device. Lastly is the MS5024. It has five zones, two signal circuits, and operates on 24 volts. It has a much larger circuit board and is notably heavier than these other two panels. The 5012 and 5024 were both part of Firelight's Firewatch 5000 series. The 411 UDAC was technically not part of this lineup, but functions quite similarly. Other panels that made out the Firewatch series included the 5024UD and 5210UD. Both of the UD panels were larger and featured printer and upload-download capabilities. The 5210UD in particular had more features than the rest of the Firewatch 5000 series, and there will be a separate video on that one. But in the meantime, let's begin with the 411 UDAC. So here's the 411 UDAC, powered up. It's got a small circuit board here. There's the four initiating zones, signal circuit, and 12 volt auxiliary power is resettable. Two relays, transformer, AC input, batteries. This blue connector here is for a Pro 411 programmer tool. And then the phone lines. The operating interface is very, very simple. Just a bunch of LEDs and two buttons. AC, com fail for the phone lines, battery trouble, system trouble, supervisory, and the active indicator is for whenever the panel is in alarm. The operator controls include acknowledge silence, which share the same button, and reset. So very simple panel. And only one battery because this panel operates on 12 volts. The demo system consists of two smoke detectors and a single strobe. Over here is a system sensor I3, two WTAR-B. This is a two-wire photoelectric smoke detector with a thermal sensor and a sounder. There's also a system sensor RA400Z from an LED enunciator connected to it. Over here is another system sensor I3. This is a 4WITAR-B, four-wire for electric smoke detector with an isolated thermal sensor and a sounder. The isolated thermal sensor will come into play when we activate the system. And the notification appliance is just a system sensor, Spectralert Classic, S1224MC strobe. No horns on this system, as both detectors have their own sounders. When the two-wire detector alarms, it activates its local sensor and alarms the panel. Very simple. It also lights the RI400Z LED. Now the four-wire detector behaves a bit differently. If the smoke sensor detects a fire or the test switch is pressed, only the local sounder activates. But if the isolated thermal sensor detects a fire, then the local sounder is activated and the panel alarms. It's a bit strange, but that's how this detector operates. There is also non-isolated thermal sensor versions of this full wire detector as well. And the strobe is connected to the panel, so it only flashes when the panel alarms. So here we go.
There we go, very simple. Since the sounder is local to the detector, it can't be silenced by the panel. So we just reset and the sounder also silences. Now let's do this detector. First we'll start off with the test switch, which will show how the sounder only sounds but not the panel. Now we'll activate the thermal sensor and activate the system. There we go. So with the sound switch, the strobe stops flashing, but the sound will keep going until it resets. So that's it for the 411 UDAC. This is a very simple representation of this panel, but a lot of configuration can be done using the 411 Pro programmer or the software. Besides the communicator, the zones can be configured for a variety of different functions, including water flow, supervisory, and even alarm verification. The signal circuit can also be programmed to do temporal coding instead of continuous. Hence, the 411 UTAC can be used as a far alarm control panel, even if it may have not been designed for that purpose. Now let's take a look at the MS5012, which is more designed as both a far alarm panel and a communicator. So here is the MS5012. Take a look at the inside here. It's got a much smaller circuit board. In fact, older 5012s had a skinnier cabinet than this. Transformer, batteries, phone lines are up here, internal piezo, they're labeled accordingly. You get your five initiating zones, your setable auxiliary power, one bell circuit, and then energized outputs for alarm, trouble, supervisory, and comm failure. Unlike the 411 UDAC, the 5012, has a full keypad with operator controls, LED, and a character display. For the demo setup, we have a BGA pull station and a system sensor 2100 smoke detector. For the notification appliance, we have a Wheelock 7002T, 12 volt model. Interestingly enough, the 5012 has a filtered bell circuit output. So mechanical horns like this one should sound relatively clean. A lot of firelight panels have full wave rectified power, and mechanical horns tend to sound pretty rough on that. But not on the 5012, oddly enough. So let's start with a quick walk test. So to enter certain functions on this panel, you have to enter a certain code on the keypad. So we press mode, and then we enter our code. And the codes are the same for all the panels, so it doesn't matter. And now we are in walk test, and the trouble LED indicates. So walk test is just like many firelight or notifier panels. When an alarm is tripped, it sounds the signal for four seconds. If it's tripped again, one second. So. The keypad keeps track of the last zone that was alarmed, which in this case was zone one. That's it for walk test. So to exit walk test, you can reset or just go back to normal mode. Back to normal mode. All right, now let's demonstrate the system in general alarm. Send on 2T sounds pretty good. On other firelight -like panels, it'll probably sound pretty rough.
just aired out the smoke detector. So now we can reset the system. And back to normal. So the 5012 and other Firewatch panels have a history mode that shows all the past events on the system. So we'll enter mode and enter the code to enter history mode. So the latest event on this panel is a system reset. That makes sense. That's alarm silence. Alarm on zone two. Silence again. Alarm on zone one. And reset. And the same stuff. This could be helpful, especially if there's any, say, intermittent troubles on the system. Then we just head back to normal. Now let's look at troubleshoot mode. This mode can be used to diagnose any problems with any of the system wiring. So now we enter a letter or number to check the status of any power on the system. So A is AC power. It's around 125 volts AC. B is battery power. 13.4 volts. It's pretty good. Check zone 1's power. 5.2 volts, that's normal. If it was open, it would be around 13 volts, which is the maximum. And if there was a short, it'll be close to zero. Zone two, it's around 12 volts. Zone three, same thing. Zone four, 5.2. And zone five, it's also 5.2. The reason why zones 2 and 3 have higher voltage is because those are designed for use with two-wire smoke detectors. Zones 1, 4, and 5 are only meant for pole stations or any other contact devices like mechanical heats. So that's troubleshoot mode. Pretty neat feature on this panel. So that's the MS-5012. It's nice to be able to have a keypad and display right in the panel, as opposed to the 411U deck. And there's a lot more functions that could be accessed through the keypad that weren't shown here. But we could take a look at that on the MS5024. And here is the MS5024. It's got a much larger circuit board compared to the 12 volt panels. Here are the five initiating zones. And unlike the 12-volt panels, all of them can accept two-wire smoke detectors, two programmable relays, auxiliary power, resettable and non-resettable, two signal circuits, transformer, that connects the AC line, battery cable to the batteries. It's kind of a tight fit. Phone lines are here, and the keypad and character display. On the top right, there's a little connector here for an ADM24 enunciator driver module. This allows the use of an RZA5 enunciator. The 512 has something similar, except it's a 12 volt version. For this demo setup, we have a BG10L pole station, a system sensor I3, TW-B, RA400Z remote LED enunciator connected to the I3, and the notification appliances, or a Wheelock MIZ horn, and a Wheelock LS1-24 strobe. The MIZ is coded to march time. So here we go. Let's start with the smoke detector. Alarm verification is enabled. So it will take two alarm trips to activate the signals. Okay, so the detector activated briefly and the panel is going through its verification cycle. It might trip again, but just in case. Give it a little bit more smoke.
relays on this panel are quite noisy. And the strobe is set for audible silence, so it keeps flashing. It's always nice to have two NACs that could be individually programmed on this panel. Now let's do a subsequent alarm. Just stared out the smoke detector, so now we can reset the system. And back to normal. So the keypad on the 5024 has the same functions as the 5012. At least on this panel, it lists all the available functions right here. So real quick, let's do a LAN test. Mode. code, and you get lamp test. Very nice. You can do drill. So programming one of the Firewatch 5000 series panels and the 411 UDAC is roughly the same across all of them with some minor variations. So into programming mode, we enter the code. And we are in programming. So the numbers on the left represent the address of the memory location being accessed. And then this digit on the right just indicates the value of that address. So the first couple of addresses are mostly to set up the communicator phone numbers, formats, and other configurations like that. Beyond that is configuration options for the file on portion of the panel to set different types for the zones like supervisory or water flow, what types the two relays are, the signal codings for both bell circuits, and other options like that. So use the arrow keys to navigate to each of the addresses. If there is a change that needs to be made, you set the value with either the keypad numbers, and then press enter store to save the value for that address, and just keep going through. There's also a function to jump directly to an address as well, so you don't have to cycle through all these. Once program is all set, all you have to do is go back to normal. That's it. And that concludes this overview of the MS5024, MS5012, and 411 UDAC. The Firewatch 5000 series of panels were discontinued in the mid to late 2000s with the release of the MS5 UD and MS10 UD. The 411 UDAC lasted out longer, and as of recording, still appears to be in production. The Firewatch series can still be found in some places nowadays, but are slowly getting replaced with more modern systems. If you do happen to acquire one of the Firewatch series of panels, they make for great small demonstration systems, and they are often the same size as even simpler panels like the MS4424, yet provide a full keypad and display interface, as well as a built-in communicator. While the MS5 UD and MS10 UD make for excellent upgrades to these older panels, the Firewatch series is a lot smaller and more compact, which are great for any first timers or anyone who may want a small and simple fire alarm panel, or perhaps someone who may want a communicator to add to their larger fire alarm system. In any case, if you have questions on any of these firelight panels, feel free to post them below. But until next time, have a nice day.